basically, since you have that interchange, you actually get more out of it as long as everyone is willing to count to 10. So involving more teachers in education, I think there's a burnout rate. I really feel like that's the case. Um, technology can really ease that workload. Um, once you have a methodology down, that's awesome. It stinks that so many people had to change it in midstream because computers came out and people couldn't touch them. And people were just like, maybe we'll do touch screens and maybe we'll, and all this text started flying around and it was just like, we just sit these people down and trust me, I've trained, I've taught adult learners. This is always the gap. Just explain to them, I'm not gonna break the computer. <laughs> you do have to click on things to learn and there's a gap in your hand-eye coordination. So just stop. Uh, stop trying to touch what's on the screen and um, let your eyes guide you, like when you're driving, until you get used to the mouse and the keyboard. And um, your project will actually come together itself. Like magic, you know? Um, so you could create hubs that interconnect. Again, um, that is a very, very far-reaching high point, uh, that's a career goal. Um, that's something that I have to understand, and it, it's not that hard for me having worked for so long. Um, it's very easy for me to understand how long this will take, what my project scope is, because um, I've worked on projects. So I, I know exactly how, how hard this is going to be. Um, it's not easy. It's hard for beginners. I don't know that I would take anyone and point them directly at that goal of making you know, this, this um, super highway of information on how to learn. Um, but it, it's certainly doable. Um, and you can certainly involve people in the various parts of the project and encourage them to learn how to learn. And from there, they just branch off. So, um, and they get to what they wanted. And, and that's why I mentioned the, the um, Finnish technique, which actually, you know, they didn't used to do testing. So no, no one knew how good it was. They, they ran them through the international testing that came out number one, you know? I think the only thing that I would add to that, you know, insofar as education, education goes, you know, like if there's a school, is a physical component, and you can even use a projector, you know, just where kids like run to something and then, you know, the touch screen and they can expand it out or, you know, there's all sorts of stuff coming out. Japanese have concerts where the singer is a hologram. It's like, it's coming, you know? Like it is there. Um, we just, are working on the tech to get that capacity and until then building an infrastructure that anticipates that tech that bridges the gaps before we hit them and then that continues along the same lines is absolutely the best way to go so uh opportunities free online educational courses i mentioned existing forums popular modes of interaction if it's good and it's all linked in one place they'll probably start your website and just, you know, surf around and go back to it and see see that it's a, a living thing and that it's growing. Um, and I think that's especially important for kids. You know, uh, when I was 19, I realized that I knew nothing. <laughs> and I looked back at my life and I was like, wow, like, I didn't know anything growing up. And when I was either 20 or 21, I it happened again. I was like, two years ago or a year or whatever it was. I didn't know anything, you know, like, God, everything, like, I learned so much, you know, I, I was in college at the time and, and getting my um, joint bachelor's, etc. cetera. Um, and, and then it happened again a couple years later. And I was like, wow, you know, when I was, when I was 21, I actually really didn't know anything. And now I'm 22. And that was the moment, the third time around, I was like, this is going to happen my whole life. So I think that's the only component that kids are missing that adults have is, you know, this, this lack of understanding that you are not who you are going to be. You know, occasionally I have to remind myself, you know, Hillary, you're working on this thing and you want to bridge these gaps and you would love to do events. And just remember, you have 30 working years left to do this, you know? Like in 30 working years, do you want to be doing exactly the same thing? Like exactly the same thing? Or do you want to say, you know, is my real question, what if I can't change? Is that what I'm afraid of, is what if I can't change? Because I know that I can, you know? Like I get up every day and I change, so let's just keep going. You know what I mean? 30 years worth of change, that's a lot. So, um, and I think that that is incorporated in forums. I think that it's incorporated now in modern forms of interaction like memes. 
uh, modern forms of advertising, which are actually in some ways very educational. Um, comms theory is definitely starting starting to permeate. It took it long enough, but what you gonna do? You know, you we finally got iPads into the Senate like six years ago, and they're still reading green eggs and ham for filibusters. And I'm like, do you guys have your iPads out and you're reading the 384 page health bill that you claim is too long to read because if you can sit there and listen to Green Eggs and Ham, you can probably do that now. You have an iPad. So tech finally broke the barrier. That's awesome. Um, corporate drives for digital interaction. Those are all over the place now. It's becoming a component of value statements. It's becoming a component of brand and people are all about their brands. It's brands, brands everywhere. This is Penny Arcade. It's a brand. Um, it's part of my brand. It's part of who I am. And that's very commercial of me. It's very American. Um, I bleed red, white, and blue. So, um, it is all that I am. Um, and it's, it's important to me to be branded American. And, and that's an American. It's a very positive, they have a convention called PAX and PAX is an old word for peace. And, um, that's actually a component of their agenda and they've fought for it and they've fought problems for that. So. Um, political agendas, advancement in government, that's a grassroots. Um, it's something that is accessible through education. Educating activists is awesome. Um, popular trends as education, like Let's Play, those are awesome. Um, a lot of the successful YouTubers um, are slightly more than novelties. They have modes of interaction. I talk a lot with my hands. I've noticed that a lot of YouTubers do that. And now I talk more with my hands because I feel like it makes my message um, more comprehensible. I understand that it's still personalized. I'm very Anglo-Saxon, American, as previously mentioned, you know, like that is very much my culture. And um, it, obviously gamer, obviously, you know, geek. Um, I love geek chick. Um, but the fact that I'm, I'm tapping into this creative aspect by, you know, using my body to express itself is something that I picked up in Let's Play. So I love these new trends that are coming. So that is very awesome. Um, basically, that's what I'm shooting for on my project. And I suppose that's why I wound up with the Learning Manifesto. So hopefully it's not too much of a OK, so we are during, doing a Learning Manifesto. At least that's what I'm doing on my page. Um, basically about building learning connections, it seems to be what the course is about, and kind of leading from the back. Um, I've done activism on a grassroots scale, which gives me a pretty awesome opportunity to understand the growth mindset insofar as politics is concerned, insofar as um, the difference between leadership and management is concerned. I actually got to take a couple courses in um, IO psychology, industrial organization psychology. Um, so it kind of let me see the difference between groups and teams and um, leaders and managers. So as far as, you know, how to take a concept and a method and turn around and motivate people to use that, uh, I actually get to have a pretty interesting perspective. So that's pretty cool. So um, as far as it goes, uh, flexible integra integ integration of the growth mindset to create a recursive learning environment. What we really want in teams which is where you wind up with um, your leaders, who aren't always your managers, is to have a conversation that goes on not only between us, but also with, you know, from you to yourself and then back to them. Um, it's a little bit more Eastern than some people might have run into, but um, some people actually talk around the subject rather than directly to it. Um, so even though, you know, uh, as an introvert, I tend to problem solve when I speak, I will often, when I'm engaging in a conversation, use the Socratic method, which is the Western version of that, where you ask a question to understand what it is that's in between you or what it is that you're working on, and then uh, come to an agreement on what the actual project is or what methodology you should use in order to um, attain that project in the best possible way for you, for the community, etc. So. Um, Open reflection on the fact that the portfolio is an environment, not a fixed work, was a cool takeaway from this week's lesson. An examination of educational forums as learning environments I thought was pretty cool when I was looking at some of the examples, um, when I was looking at the instructions. Creating what used to be called a ring was um, one of the takeaways. 
And um, that was pretty interesting because they actually used to have those back in the day where at the bottom you would click and it would take you to another website that was similar and another website that was similar. And people just linked all their websites together. Now we do that mostly for um, credibility purposes. So SEO search engines will actually look at your website and see what it's connected to. And if you're connected to a credible website and it's connected back, then you will actually be more credible. So that kind of took rings a little bit out of the loop because they were set up to give you the maximum learning environment in um, an enclosed area rather than kind of open sourcing it. Everyone uses, for instance, Google now to web crawl. Um, examination of ed educational forums as learning environments. That was interesting too. Um, I don't think you used uh, that the class used the word forum per se, but I believe that's the internet environment that we're looking at where you kind of invite that open conversation. So um, discussion of leadership from a grassroots pr perspective, the fact that it's a forum would actually give you access to that where you're having this kind of recursive conversation. Issues in education. There's a lack of training for online interaction. Even though people um, have been introduced to computers and even though we've kind of phased out people who weren't on them uh, through education, up through their education when they started educating other people, so much about online is still not understood because it's hard for our older generation to connect with something that's inside of a computer because you can't physically touch it, it's very concrete. So you wind up with um, all this lack of training from online interaction. There's gaps in learning for adults. There's gaps in learning for our policymakers. And no matter how user-friendly a company like Apple, which it didn't start out as a computer, it actually started out as a gaming system, basically. Um, programmer joke. Was um, its interface and its gameplay are so fused that you don't learn from it. You simply interact with it. Um, and then we have, you know, PC and we have Google and whatnot, and they actually have this separation between their gaming consoles and their, their apps and whatnot, and then the actual use of the computer. So there's this disconnect and we're trying to bridge that. Um, there's an improper or inconsistent allocation of resources. That's really common. We have PACs in the government. We have people with agendas. We have pork belly bills. Like, it's going to happen. The nice thing about online is it's free. Even if you're homeless, you can go to a library, you can get an education. edX is a great site, edX.org. So, you know, say for instance, you take, you're take you taking this class and you're like, I want to learn about gameplay, she just talked about gameplay. There's a free course on gaming. I mean, it might not even be offered by the institution you're at, it's not like you're cheating somebody out of something. You can just get tertiary education, you can go to StumbleUpon, uh, and it will just constantly pop up websites that are in your interest that other users have flagged. So these allocation, this allocation problem is not insurmountable um, and putting people in touch with this online learning community can actually really bridge that very easily. Um, it's mostly about capacity, you know, people are putting, being put in contact with um, very specific websites instead of ones that actually um, encourage your growth mindset, instead of ones that actually, you know, learn you up. I have a teacher or I have a teacher friend um, and she said uh, one of the first things she taught me about education was um, she got her master's um, mostly on scholarship, brilliant about it, was scaffolding where you actually have to start where the learner is and you have to build every single level until they can get to what it is that you're talking about. And you know they'll have pieces of what's in between but they can't get to them and actually put it into a system and systems are horribly confusing for people because um, <laughs> you can't touch them. So you run into the same problem as with um, online and computers. Um, I have my MS in systems theory, essentially it's communications. And um, there's this thing with technical jargon and that those are the little pieces, you know, so you might have a website that you know that you can use you can't get to all the learning in that and you certainly can't get up to what someone else is talking to unless you have this scaffold in between. And I think that's kind of what you need in that um, educational hub that you put on a portfolio or what you guys are calling a e-portfolio is um, the scaffolding to get to the point that you're making, which is quite simply to be able to learn constantly. Um, Finland has great programs for that. It has to do with um, proclivity 
you know, in natural interest uh, and aptitude. And the two actually have to match up. And you have to have access to the resources. And um, that's actually not hard. It's just very difficult because of the way society is set up. Um, that, you know, for instance, I can put this video up, I can put it up on my portfolio, but it's not going to be the number one search result. It could be the best video for explaining it. It could be the best video for explaining it in the world, but because I don't know, for instance, Warren Buffett, <laughs> it's not going to get hits. It is what it is. I can build and eventually it will get there. So that's, that's why I look at this as gra grassroots. That's what I, I keep seeing as a recurring theme as far as, you know, getting the information to leaders, you know, that's event handling and, uh, and uh, grassroots act activism. And you have to build for both of them. Guidance towards online resources, I just talked about it, it's a possible solution. Simple exchanges of best practices, that's for the forums, you know, uh, best practices are awesome. It's something that corporations encourage you to exchange. It's simply a method that someone stumbled upon. And a lot of the times it's just like the scientific method, it's universal in that it fits into so many systems and it's repeatable you know so um counting to 10 when you're mad in customer service is a very simple example of a best practice um you know and you can even kind of talk to the person while you're doing it and so on and so forth so there's a little bit of explaining as far as the method goes uh, but it's a best practice because it works because why put your opinion out there if it can't wait for 10 seconds <laughs> you know what i mean so as far as different media for expression, they actually tap into different parts of our brains. Um, for instance, tonal and tonal languages are largely stored near medulla oblongata. It's why body language is so different um, in these cultures. Um, for us, that's a, a crossover point for Westerners where we actually interact with our creativity and you get this cultural miasma out of it, where, which um, is very expressive. And once you put it out into the public domain, it becomes more expressive because it becomes um, something on which anyone can comment and they actually have their own perspective on it. And that's what I was saying about this, this, um, this thing. And then there's this interchange over the thing, uh, whatever the project is. And um, 